In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to send values from an HL7 message to a database. We'll set you up to have an always running receiver of HL7 messages that will extract your desired fields, format them, and write them to a SQL Server database. Our example will be with SQL Server, but other databases are very similar. Here's our scenario. I would like to receive SIUS12 HL7 messages, which are new appointments, and create patients, and followed by appointments in our database. We've included a simple script that can generate this dummy database for you so you can easily follow along. Let's start by taking a look at our dummy database. It's very simple. We just have a patients table and an appointments table, but it illustrates a very common scenario when working with HL7. Running the process will be HL7 Soup's integration host. If you're new to it, we've got two getting started tutorials that'd be worth checking out after this video. Let's head over to HL7 Soup and take a look at an SIUS12 message and at the fields that we'll be extracting. I've already added some highlighters to indicate which fields we'll be using. And you'll see we've got a couple of SIUS12 messages. Uh, is our first one and the second one. So for this example, we're going to extract the patient's ID, their surname, their first name, their date of birth, and then later on, we're going to create an appointment for that patient. And for the appointment's dates, we're going to be using the SEH 11.4 and 11.5 for our data. There are a number of places you might find the appointment date. If I click on here, we'll see also highlighted is the AIS, the AIL, and the AIP. So depending on your message, you might find your dates in different locations. But for the two messages we've got here, both of them have their dates in the SEH 11.4. So let's head over to the integration host and create our workflow. So here we are in the integration workflow designer. We are going to receive our messages by TCP, but I've got some choices. I could get it from the directory scanner or HTTP receiver. There are other options as well. So I'm just going to take the defaults. It's going to come in on port 22222 my local machine and the message type will be an HL7 message that we're going to be receiving. I'm just going to right click on the message and insert a sample message and I'm going to insert the sample SIU12. This is so we've got a message to base our bindings on but you'd use your own one if you have one but otherwise the sample message is an excellent resource for this. And so now let's create an activity to write this data into a database. I'm going to click here, add a new activity and we're going to change that across to a database query. We'll give it a name, write patient, and then I choose which data provider we're using. We are going to be using SQL Server, so SQL Client, and then I just need to add in the connection string. There are some example connection strings available for you if you need some help creating your connection string, and you can just double click on them to use them, and you just need to change the password and the user ID. I happen to have mine on the clipboard, so I'm just going to paste it into the message. In my case, I'm accessing SQL Server in Microsoft Azure for my data source, but a local database would also be fine. Okay, now we've got our connection string. It's time to add in the query. Again, I'll just copy that and paste it in. Let me just quickly explain the query. We're inserting into the patients table. We're adding the fields, first name, last name, birth date, and external patient ID, and the values will be adding our parameters into that query. Now, because I've added parameters, it's listed the parameters down below here. You could actually put the values directly in your query if you wanted to, but then you're at risk of a SQL injection attack. So if you do need to add your own parameters, either click the new parameter button here, or just simply type it into the query. And you'll see that the parameter is automatically added below. I'll get rid of that dummy parameter because we don't need it. And now I just need to populate the values of these parameters. So because we added in the message template earlier, I can just use the binding tree here and find the fields that I'm after. So we wanted the patient's name, ban that, drag the family name to the last name field, drag the given name and the date of birth. And we were using the PID3 for our patient ID. Okay, that's the super basics done. Let's save and close, and I'm going to give this a quick try at this stage. So you'll see our workflow is up and running and ready to receive on port 22222. I'm going to head across to HR7 Soup, and I'm just going to send through one of these two messages. And we can see it successfully come in. Let's go back into the editor and take a look what we've got. Back into the workflow designer, and I like looking at the logs inside the workflow designer. And we can see we received our HR7 message, 
and we wrote into the database using this query and here's our parameters going in. That all looks very successful. Let's actually go to the database and take a look. So I'll bring up SQL Server Management Studio and find my table. I just wrote to the patients table. So I'm right click on that and select the top rows. And there we go. Our message was written to the database with the values that we wanted. Some quick things of note. The patient ID is a ID generated inside the database. So we're going to try and return that back to our message. And we're going to use that again when we create the appointment. So it's the database's patient ID. And we're treating the incoming patient ID as the external one, right? Because that's coming from another system. Also, this change flag and UID are used for bringing the data out of the database, so not required for this particular sample. Another quick thing of note, HR7's date format is different to SQL servers, so we better make sure as well the values that we're writing into that are actually correct. This one does seem to have worked, but that won't always be the case, so we'll make sure we format that correctly. Back to the workflow designer, back to the database activity, and I'll start by adjusting the format of the birth date. We right click, we select format dates and number, and we'll select this date format as it's suitable for a birth date. So I want to be able to get back that patient ID that was generated in the database. So I'm going to upgrade this query now, paste in a bit more functionality. I want to be able to handle if the patient already existed in the database. So I've got a, an if for that, that checks if it already existed or not. And if it does already exist, it will update it rather than insert it. We see that it's used the same parameters, and so the parameters have come across anyway, even though I pasted. And also we put an output after the insert or the update. So it outputs the identity field patient ID from the database. And we'll use that right into the appointment. So let's tell the activity we are getting a result back. And we will just call that database patient ID. We are just returning a single value. If you're returning a record set with multiple columns, just list all the columns here, comma separated, and they'll become accessible into your workflow. So let's now add another activity and we'll write in the appointment. Again, I'm going to choose a database query. We'll call this write appointment. And again, SQL client, and we'll just paste in our database query. And you'll notice the samples vanish as soon as I paste it in. And then we just need our new query. And here's one I've written earlier. Again, we are using parameters to get our values. And so here's the query to add the appointment. Similar to the last one, it's checking if it already exists and it updates it if it already does rather than inserts. And it's already got the parameters in place and you can see the parameters are being populated down here from the query. So now I just need to populate those. I choose the bindings. So out of the incoming message, we need to get the appointment ID from the SCH2 start date and in this case we're using the SCH 11.4 and as the end date the SCH 11.5 and now we just need the patient ID we can't get that from the incoming message we have to change it the response of our right patient activity and there's the ID that we created that corresponds back to this and we can just drag that in as our patient ID so now it's going to use the patient ID generated by the database when it writes the appointment message. Let's also make it so the response that we send back via HR7 also includes that patient ID. So I go back to the first activity and I'm just going to choose the response type to return custom response. Scroll down. And I'm just going to append to the outgoing message another carrot and I'm going to get the source from that patient response again and just drag that into the outgoing message that we're going to be sending back to the sender. Okay, so I'm just going to click save and close and try this out. And then back to HR7 soup, and I'm going to hit send. And we've got an error coming through. So I just double click on it to take a look. I could look in the logs as well, but we can see there's a problem setting the date and time. So I know what that's going to be. I'm going to close this and head back to integration host, edit the workflow. Although we configured the date correctly for the birth date, we didn't do it for the appointment dates. So let me just go to the parameters here. And for the end date, format date and number, use our database friendly date format, and the same for the start date. And let's save this and retry again. I'll go back to here, I'll get rid of that message, select the first S12 and hit send. 
and now we've got a success and another success and if we look at the responses that have come back if I double click on them we can see the ID has been written into the field that we got from the database and let's head across to the database we'll refresh our patients and now we've got the two records and we'll also have an appointment So that's great, we've got a successful workflow. Other things that you might wanna try, the formatting of your first name and last name, right click format is available to make sure your data is correct. Look specifically for your title casing and the nickname casing for getting those surnames right. You can also extract Base64 encoded files out of an HR7 message. So you might have a document embedded into the message or something like that. Use the Base64 encoding to get that out, put that into a blob field inside your table or a large text field. As always, if this video has helped you, please turn us the favor, give us a like, consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to take a look at the Getting Started Tutorials for Integration Host and visit our tutorials page. And please feel free to give us any comments, ask us any questions you may have about the product. Thank you.